Mom Training Podcast with Diana Ballard. Okay, we're going to dive in, girls. We're going to talk about it. Communicating with our husband. Now, I'm going to give you a couple examples. And this is something that I studied immensely because for quite a while, I did not have a good relationship with men at all. (laughs) So, I mean, I dated lots of guys. I just, it just never, it just, I never really truly learned how to appreciate, how to respect. There we go. That's, I'm like, how do I get to exactly what I was feeling? (laughs) I, I did not have respect for men. Okay. I did not honor them. I, you know, had some, some bad examples through high school of how to treat guys. I learned different things of, you know, like feminist stuff, like about men. Like I just, I didn't have like a good, which the feminist movement is not my favorite thing. I'm just going to straight out, come out and say that right now because men are just as important as women. They are just as important and should be treated with just as much honor and respect as we as women are standing up that we want to. So I think I feel so I feel the feminist movement has gone a little too far of bashing men that we don't need them. Girls are the girls are the power. They're going to take over the world. Nah, brah. I want dudes involved, too. (laughs) Going back to that checks and balances, we need both sides. Girls are freaking highly emotional, man. I don't want them in charge all the time. You got to get some logic in there, (laughs) okay? Checks and balances, dude. Both people are different, and we need both of them, okay? Getting off my soapbox for that, but we need to respect men. We need to honor them. And there is a lot of problems, If we don't honor and respect men and there are so many things that I could like so many directions I could go in right now of ways that men are being disrespected and dishonored in our own homes and out in the community. Okay. Like be scared for your sons (laughs) going out into the world, going out and dating freak, man. We need to teach our own daughters our own sons to respect themselves and to respect the men in their life. So what we're going to talk about today is about honoring and respecting and about, about communicating in a way that is honorable and respectful. Okay. Now I'm going to give you an example. So I'm, I'm almost halfway with my pregnancy right now. And you know, after a long day, if I get comfortable in a position on the couch and I'm doing my writing, I'm doing my spiritual study before I go to bed, if I didn't do it in the morning, you know, sometimes I'm comfy and I'm like, I, I've been running around all day and I'm in a really comfortable position and I really don't want to go down the stairs into the cold basement and change over the laundry right now. So my husband is also sitting on the couch, but he's just sitting normal and he's reading on his phone or doing something like that. And so what ways could I go about asking him to change over the laundry for me? When both of us are chilling, I am straight up possibly being lazy. Okay. There are a couple different directions I could go to make what I want happen, which is to have him go downstairs and change over the laundry. And you're like, Dinah, you're lazy. Yeah. So what? <laughs> I'm allowed to have a lazy moment and so are you. And you know what? If you can have someone help you that and make it so it's not like a big deal, they're not feeling like they're taking advantage of. You've had a long day and you want to sit on your butt for a minute? Girl, go at it. <laughs> go at it, okay? Uh, and I was having a lazy moment. I was comfortable. I was. I had my music playing. I, I did not want to get off my butt. So this is what I said to him. I said, honey, my two little butt cheeks right now are so comfy and warm under this blanket, sitting on this chair. And, and I look at you and your handsomeness and, and think, wow, look how strong he is. <laughs> look at how strong he is sitting over there, that handsome dude. And I was thinking to myself, what would it be like if he was to walk downstairs and change over the laundry for me so that I didn't have to get my comfortable little butt off this couch out of this warm, warm blanket (laughs) and, and, and have to go downstairs and 
I'd be breathing hard because I'm pregnant. And now this is all a joke. Like I'm, this is really what I said, but this is all me saying it in like a, a funny way. And I'm being completely honest with him. And you know, I might just be feeling like a lazy bum. And I look at you and know that you're such a good husband. And you know, the thought of you changing over the laundry would be awesome. So would you go change over the laundry? (laughs) And he looked at me and he laughed and he went and changed the laundry. Now that my friend was strategic communication. You're like, Dinah, are you like smoking something? Because what you just said right now, like was not strategic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) Girl, 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 girl. Okay. What I did there was I was able to be completely honest. I just feel like being a lazy bum, hun. I'm warm under this blanket. I, I'm comfortable. And I, I just wondered if you would go change over the laundry. Now we have a lot of humor in our relationship. So that, that works good for me. Okay. Let me give you a couple examples of other ways I could have got him to do the same exact thing without it being like a funny moment or him maybe being slightly like, okay, whatever, I'll just go do it for you. Right. And it it, it was no big deal. But so here are a couple examples of things that I could have done instead. Honey, I'm so tired and I've had such a long day and the kids did this and they did this and complain, complain, complain. And I'm so comfy on this couch right now. And I really like, I just can't do another single thing. Can you please go change the laundry for me? Okay. Now I exaggerated a little bit, but not really. Okay. Have we heard ourselves talk like this before? I know that I have sometimes and I catch myself and I'm like, oh gosh, gross. <laughs> I do not like whining Ugh, and then complaining and like getting my husband to do stuff when I'm like that is, doesn't feel good. It feels icky. Okay. Again, he would go change the laundry over, but it felt icky. Okay. Here's another one. Oh, the washer's done. Could you go change it over, please? And may- maybe you get a little resistance of like, wait, why can't you do it? Do you know how much I've done today and that I had a kid throw up on me and that I had this and that and I made you a huge meal and that what are you doing on your phone anyway? You're not even doing anything important. I'm doing something important right now. I'm taking care of my mental and emotional state right now, which is so important for me to do. So you like go change over the laundry. Like, are you, are you kidding me? Like you can't even help me with one thing. Really? Like he might just go to not be around you anymore. Okay. You're like, why don't you ever spend time with me? Uh, maybe because you yell at him every chance you get that he's not being exactly what you want him to be. Okay. Or that he's fallen short in a million ways. And again, that can come from using strategic conversations with him will increase your chances of getting what you want without being a pain in the butt. Okay. There's other ways of being passive aggressive. Oh, the laundry just needs to be turned over. Oh, darn, that darn laundry. Oh, (laughs) okay. You know, so there's the whining. There's being angry. I could, you know, I could have complained that, honey, I'm so pregnant. And if I walk up and down those stairs, I'll just, I'm just tired and I'm growing a baby, honey. And I mean, just give me a break. Okay. Like, dude, I know all this stuff. Okay. I know I'm pregnant. I know I'm being lazy sitting on here that I need a break, whatever. Okay. I pushed myself freaking hard today. Okay. How are you presenting things to your husband? Okay. Say you see another husband that's, that's helping out his wife a little bit more than yours does. And you're like, see, guys can help out. Guys, guys can help. Husbands are supposed to help out. The teamwork is amazing. Let's, why are, why can't you do that? Okay. Uh, not my, not my fave conversation or person to be around, says the man. Okay. How are you communicating with your husband? Are you being strategic? Are you thinking about what you're saying? 
before you say it, how you're saying it, the tone of voice, what what expression you have on your face, what goal you want on the other end. You're like, Dinah, that is so much to practice. <laughs> that is so much to even think about and work on. And maybe you've never done anything like that. Hashtag mom training. Get your little booty over there. We have hours of content for you to listen to and some of them are about strategic communication okay we talk about that and man I'll tell you what I would love to put together a course about husbands because again my husband is a miracle man he was a very good man from the very beginning but man there he has become exactly what I want and need (laughs) and and that's that hasn't been through manipulation that hasn't been through force. That's been through strategy. Has been through presenting things and having him make a choice to say, "Yeah, you know what? I, I see how that would help you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I see how my life would be easier by helping you do something so that you're happier." <laughs> okay. I mean, there are ways to communicate that will make your life so much easier. And this is more than just with husbands. This is with your kids. This is with your your parents, your in laws people around you, people at work, strategic communication is your key to being able to make your life easier. Just dish me up some of that. (laughs) Okay. Give me, give me all you got to teach me how to be strategic in my communication, how to understand people more and how to give them what they want, which then helps you get what you want. Think about how you're communicating with your husband, how you're asking him for help. And You know, it could be as simple as, hey, honey, I am really going to be working on taking control of the house and taking responsibility. And I'm going to take over the role of the house, but I'm going to need your help. So would you be able to help me with the dishes tonight? Could you do like one side of the sink and I'll do the other? Okay. And maybe you're going to hit resistance. Maybe you're not. But I'll tell you that kind of communication right there is how it starts. That type of communication is going to open doors for you instead of shutting them of, oh my gosh, there's so many dishes. I just can't. (laughs) Can you help me? (laughs) Okay. And I'm not going to lie. There are days when I am freaking emotional. Okay. (laughs) There, there, there literally might be days where I have cried like that. (laughs) Okay. So don't expect yourself to be perfect, but are you doing that often? Okay. Are there other days where you're like, yeah, and maybe he helps you out a little bit more. Don't let that become a habit. Don't let that become your strategy is what I'm saying. If you have days like that, cool. We're all human. We're females. We feel things. Okay. We have emotions, hormones. I'm my pregnancy hormones. <laughs> okay. You're, you're, let's, let's be real. Let's be human. Okay. But I want you to think about how you're communicating with him and learn from people who have good communication and do speak strategically in their relationship with their husband because it prevents 5 million problems all the time. No exaggeration, maybe just a little bit, but you know, (laughs) you can prevent so many problems. So I invite you to think about that. Think about what strategy you are using and if it's a good one. If there's a better one or even a best one for you to focus on. If you like today's podcast, share it with another mama. Thank you for everybody who's telling other moms about the podcast. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And uh, go speak strategically to your husband. If you don't have one, you better learn this now. (laughs) Start practicing it on anyone you can so that when you get a husband, if you want a husband, then you'll be ready. Prevent those problems. We'll see you next Tuesday on the Mom Training Podcast.